Well, we're almost there. We've got main menu there on the display. But we've got a problem that says no disk, could not put disk SD card in the SPI idle state. Um, I had gotten that during testing. So I'm going to grab a different SD card, put it in there, and see if I can get past that. If not, I think I'm going to have to take a break. Well, still got the problem. Uh, and then this, when it first booted up, it said SD not ready. And it um, doesn't seem to be responding to anything. The SD card I'm using is an old 512 megabyte model because uh, this only takes a 2 gig and I don't have any others as far as I know that are that small. So I think it's off to the forums and hopefully I can figure out what's going on here. Well there's the answer to the SD card problems. It's very difficult to see but that pin right there doesn't have the solder it needs. It's got just a barely, barely visible gap. So, just gotta fix that. I think we'll be good to go. Alright, so everything is installed and working. Um, you'll notice that the Pololus there, they're different colors. Um, turns out the ones that I ordered are not Pololu clones. They're something else entirely. So I took them out, I put in some modules I have from a, a different project, um, and the motors work a lot better. So, there's a couple of things we need to do. Um, I moved the pins around like I said I needed to on the end stop. So on the left there, there's um, two wires, and then there's the Y, the X and the Y there. So we need to verify that the end stop polarity is correct. Okay, so now it's trying to home, and it can't. Um, so because the, the motors aren't running. So what we do is open up the lid and press the home switch buttons just by hand. So here is the X and then here's the Y. Okay, maybe they both need to be held down. Okay, there we go. So it did home. So the home switches are set correctly. And that's excellent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable auto home and I'm going to move the gantry to the center or move the head to the center and then the motor shouldn't move at all when it boots and then um, I'll use the joystick on the I2C display board to move it and make sure they move in the right directions. Okay, we're in main so we're going to go to move Okay, so now when I move the joystick, the head should move. So here's up. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I've got the motors reversed. So I gotta shut it off and try it again. Alright, I swapped the motor cables. We're trying it again. So left. Cool. Right. Alright. Up. Excellent. It looks like the motors are wired in the correct direction. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the auto homing and hopefully it just homes itself. There's one detail that um, 
isn't clear on the documentation about how this works, but I'm started with the, the sample code or the sample configuration for a similar machine. So we have the home directory on X is 1, and that's the logic value given to the direction pin on the Pololu when it's homing. Same for Y. Um, the scale is positive on X, which means it's actually not clear um, what that means, whether the pin is high or low when X is increasing, but um, the scale on Y is negative, which means whatever it is for X, it's opposite for Y. So um, I'm going to try it out with home directory or home direction one and one on, on both of those and hope that it it homes the right direction. If it doesn't, I'll have to kill the power as soon as I can, but there's separate code. Uh, the code is separate. It doesn't, the, the software they've written doesn't use the motion code for homing. It's actually a really simple loop um, that does the homing function. So that's why they're separate. It would, seems like there's redundant information here in the config file, but the reason for that is it makes the homing code really simple. All right, and it's homed. How great is that? Okay, so now we should be able to move it again. We'll make sure that, um, oh right, so this is an interesting point too. The origin on the louse is the bottom left corner. So when it's homed on my machine, because my uh, limit switch is on the top left, X is 0, and then Y is the maximum extent of the, the machine. So if I move the cursor down, mm, see that number should be getting smaller. So there's another inversion there. I'm moving the, it down, and the number's getting bigger. It should be getting smaller. But it's moving the right direction. Okay, so I inverted the sign on um, the config for Y. So Y had been negative, but now it's positive. Um, I suspect that when I go here and do move on Y, I'll have to do it backwards. Yeah. So I had to I have to push up to go down. Okay, so we've tested the motors to my satisfaction, at least for the moment. Um, it's my impression that the Laos board requires Ethernet. This is the Ethernet cable, but I don't have Ethernet in this room. So um, I never throw away, in fact, occasionally I go to Goodwill looking for these WRT54Gs, and this is a GS. And so I'm using this in, um, with DDWRT as a wireless client, and it's providing the wired Ethernet connection for the laser cutter. And I'm pretty sure I got that working, so um, what I'm going to do is boot the laser cutter up and we're going to see if it DHCPs and then we're going to um, see if we can ping it so there we go okay and then um, We'll quickly look at the tool chain um, on the software side for um, using the Laos board. So I've got to turn power supply on. Okay. And then the laser. Okay. It's booting. So 
homing. Okay, it's homed. Now we're in the main, so let's look at, let's see. So it did DHCP for an IP address, so that's good. It's not the IP address it wants. So I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to look at what MAC address it used, and then I'm going to add that to my DHCP server. All right, we're DHCPing again, and that is the address we want. So... Huh. That was fascinating. For some reason, the homing behaved really strangely. Uh, what was different is I used the reset on the I2C display, not power on, power off. And I thought it was already homed, so let's try that again. Well, home just fine that time. Okay, well, anyways, um, so it's got its IP address. Now, um, let's... See if we can ping it. Okay, can ping just fine. So um, this is Inkscape, and I just downloaded the Hackaday logo. One thing that I'm going to do is set up the document to be A4, and if anybody can tell me how to set the defaults any escape, I would be appreciative. Okay, so set it to an A4, and use millimeters, and um, landscape. Okay, yeah, so I'd really like to be able to set the defaults to that because that would match the laser cutter. Okay, so there's the Hackaday logo. I don't want it to be nearly that big. Oh, uh, come on. Okay, I think I got the scale wrong, but I don't care. So it's quite a bit smaller. Um, we're going to use the extensions and um, open in VisiCut. So it should open the VisiCut app. Okay, there it goes, and then there's the logo. And it should be ready for engraving, so engrave everything using the louse on acrylic. Um, I can set the position. I'm just going to leave these the same. I still don't have the laser plugged in just just to make sure. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up in the corner to zero, zero, and then just do 30, 30. Okay. I know it's not a square, but I don't care. So zero zero thirty thirty, and then um, and then when I do execute down here, it renders it, and then it's supposed to TFTP it. Oh yeah, see there we go. Receive file, run VisiCut. Okay, so that looks like it worked. Um, I'm going to move the head to the center okay so we got the head in the center and then I'm going to set the origin to the center just in case things go crazy um, it'll be kind of in the center so let's try and start and see what happens. Run VisiCut. Okay, so that is at the same time wrong and promising. It w okay, okay. 
and then I've got that away from the origin again so let's try to execute it okay it's receiving okay it's ready to run now it seems like it's yeah that's what I'm talking about that looks fantastic I think it might just be time to plug in the laser be nice if I had some kind of a progress report on the display, but I don't. I'm there. We go. That is fantastic. I think it's time to plug the laser in and see what happens.